Now we're, now we're going to get it. Now we're going to get it. Well, good morning again, friends. <laughs> Welcome on this Ascension Sunday and this seventh Sunday of Easter, this past Thursday. In the calendars of most churches in the Western world, we celebrated the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ into heaven to sit at the right hand of the Father until he returns in glory. Uh, many churches call this Ascension Sunday because we don't generally have a service on Thursday. So this is Ascension Sunday and again, the seventh Sunday of Easter. And I will be talking uh, this morning in part about the Ascension and what that means. So if you have a bulletin or you're able to see the screen, and for anybody watching, our materials are online and been emailed out. Our greeting this morning comes to us from the book of Acts chapter 1, and it also comes to us from our uh, reading this morning from uh, the Gospel of Luke chapter 24. So this is a responsive greeting. I will read, and you are welcome to respond as you are able. Look to the skies. Search for God. Know that God is nearer to us than our very breath. Our unison gathering prayer this morning comes to us from Acts 1, and it's a prayer designed for us to say together, to pray together as a family, as brothers and sisters. Let us say this prayer together as we are able. Holy God, on this most unsettling day, you drew Jesus to your side, promising his companions Holy Spirit power, mission, and purpose calling his disciples to trust a future that they could not yet see. As we look to Jesus this day, give us the same hope of Holy Spirit power, mission, and purpose, and call to trust a future that we too are yet unable to see. Guide us into your depths, that we may glimpse your Holy Spirit already at work in our lives, revealing your truth and empowering us to bear witness to the risen Christ. We pray this in the name of Jesus, your Son, your wisdom, your glory. Amen. And I know that uh, the good news is, for, for those people that have been vaccinated or planning on getting vaccinated, I checked this morning, and for people 18 and up in New York State, 51.5% of the state has been fully vaccinated. 
and I think almost 62% has had a shot. So I've already had inquiries about coffee hour and can we take our masks off? So uh, I, I don't know just yet on that, but hopefully in the coming weeks or months, uh, we will get to that point. So I don't think we're there just yet. But with that said, uh, we still can't greet our neighbors as we have traditionally. But what we can do this morning is we can stand as we're able and we can turn to one another and we can wave to them the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Peace, Deb. Peace, Melissa. Peace of Christ. Peace of Christ. And please remain standing as you're in. Peace, peace. <laughs> Thank you, definitely. Good morning. Good morning. It's a nice view up here. I get to see faces instead of back of the head. Well, half the faces, right? I was going to say smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Mass is hard to tell, but I'm going to assume you're all smiling underneath. It's a beautiful day. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. Mystery of God. Draw us near. Fill our minds with awe. Wisdom of God, surprise us. Encourage us with hope. Glory of God, shine through our lives. Reveal your power and your glory. In the mystery, the wisdom, the glory of God, let, let us see. And our music ministry for this morning, uh, Don Corbett is going to sing and play, which means you can also walk and chew gum at the same time. Okay, <laughs> and you're playing Hallelujah, is that right? Okay, thank you. Let's let's uh, listen to time.
Beautiful, Don. What I, what I didn't tell you is uh, the plumbers sang that last Sunday, and if I knew you were playing this, I would have got it all together. So maybe we can do that one of these Sundays. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad you did. So next time we'll have to we'll have to put it all together. So, well, for our our kids' message this morning, I do have a picture. So I know we might have a couple kids here. So what I wanted to talk about is the story in the Gospel of Luke of the ascension of Jesus. So what it says in the Gospel of Luke is Jesus is there with his disciples. He's already come back. He's already been resurrected. But in this moment, he says bye to them, and he goes up to heaven. And he's going to be there until he returns one day. And in that moment, the disciples realize Jesus is gone. Physically, anyway. He's with us spiritually. But he's gone physically And he's going to be gone physically probably for a while. We don't know how much longer. longer, We don't know either. And what it says in the the gospel is they went back and they were excited. They were praising God. But what I wanted to talk about this morning and what I'll talk about in the sermon too. What's it like to lose the person that is the glue that holds everything together? Anybody here have somebody in your life like that? I I got Melissa's permission because I wanted to talk a little bit about her grandma Doris. Anyone here have a grandma that was just one heck of a cook? I mean, they could make everything. Melissa's grandma, Doris, who, who's a true Methodist, because her family comes from England originally, right? So they're, the, they're the, the English Methodists, so they go way back, right? But on Christmas, on Easter, and all those things, Melissa's grandma would always put together this huge thing, and they put, she'd put the leaves in the table, and the table would be there, and we would always get together. But then Melissa's grandma passed away. And the family, we, we tried to make it work, but we don't really do that stuff anymore, do we, Melissa? So this morning, Jesus goes up into heaven, and basically, kids, what he is telling the disciples is, you're in charge now. Now, for some of you kids, if your parents left for the week and they said, you're in charge of the house, do whatever you want, that might be the best thing in the world to you. But my guess is, soon, very soon, you'd say, I really wish my parents were I have some questions, there's some things I need to know. So we as the church have been put in charge of the gospel as Jesus has ascended into heaven, and he will return one day, but until he does, we are the ones that are supposed to go forth into the world and share that message. No pressure, right? So the disciples this morning fully realize for the first time that the church is in their hands through the Holy Spirit, and that's exciting, but it's also kind of scary. I remember when I was in in high school, we had a star quarterback, I think I was a freshman or a sophomore, and he graduated, went on to some full-time college scholarship, I can't remember if he went to semi-pro or pro football, but I remember the whole football team was really sad because they said, what are we going to do now? Our star quarterback is gone, but they didn't quit. They kept playing and they trudged on. They didn't do as good the next season, but they did did pretty good. So this morning, kids, what, what I wanted to tell you is... If somebody big in your life leaves or somebody moves or somebody passes on, we continue on because that's what we do. So let us pray this morning. God, we praise and thank you for our children. We thank you so much for their laughter and their joy. I can't wait, God, until the fall when we can have Sunday school again and we can have children and we can bring them up front and we can have fun and we can laugh and do those things we once did. I thank you so much for the parents that through this time of pandemic have done so much to help educate and do all the different things for our kids. We miss them, we love them. They're the future of the church. They're the future of the world. Bless them and their families. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, just some announcements. Um, We do have our Bible study every Tuesday at 4.30. Uh, That is on the Zoom program, so you are more than welcome to join us. It's a 365-day Bible study. We have packets in our office if you want to follow along and not be actually in this study, you're welcome to do that as well. Uh, We are in week 20, so I think we're in 2 Samuel, and we're into some of the Psalms. So if you want to join us for that, it's been a real learning uh, opportunity for us all. Um, I learn stuff too. I I don't know everything inside and out. I'm always learning as well. Uh, This Thursday, our men's lunch will be at Club 55, and I hear, I hear, the same Thursday at 6, there'll be a woman's dinner, a monthly woman's dinner. Is that right? I, I, so I, like, I like the enthusiasm. Go ahead. Did you want to say something about that? Okay. 
They claim they're going to have more. They claim they're going to have more fun than us, but we know better. Two words: challenge accepted. <laughs> so, to, so Thursday night, six o'clock, Club Fifty Five. Um, it's open to all ladies. Um, we are. Um, you're you're in charge of you know picking up your own dinner. Um, it's designed to be um, no church business. Um, fun, food, fellowship, what's not to love? And yes, we can have at least as much fun as the men. Yes, do. Rock on. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to see myself or Sarah. Well, I hear what you're saying, Melissa. Clearly, you have never been to a lunch with Steve Clark, Joe Singlar, and Ron Niemeyer. So, and... Oh yeah, you actually have come a couple times, so, so that will be Thursday at 6 at Club 55, and I know some of the uh, women of our church and, and other churches in the community are looking forward to that, to get out and be able to do something again. Just wanted to let, let everybody know, I did mention it, that Melissa and I will be away Sunday, uh, May 30th, we're going to be back, uh, we're leaving Thursday of that week, and we'll be back on Memorial Day. I don't like to be away that weekend, but it's the only weekend that worked with our schedule, um, I was asked to do part of a Memorial Day service, and I had to reluctantly decline that. Uh, but Pastor George Gallander will be preaching that Sunday. He'll also be uh, my emergency on-call contact, should there be any uh, issues or any problems. Uh, we continue to have so many great programs in this church. I know I list them all the time, but uh, they're uh, in your insert in your bulletin. And just to, as a reminder, the inserts are back, if you didn't notice that, all the weekly events and all the, all the numbers and things of that nature. So any other announcements this morning? Yes, sir. Oh, it was it was your birthday yesterday, isn't that right? It was yesterday, right? And you are 40, right? Okay, nobody ever debates me on that. Okay. <laughs> any other any other birthdays or anniversaries? When, when Tom's birthday? Okay, and you turned 45. You turned 45, right? Okay, all right, well, congratulations. And any other birthdays around? Or... When, when's Dick's? Wednesday, coming up. Wednesday, and you're, I, and Dick, I, and I, and I, and he, she's out of the will for that, okay. Well, I know you're a little older, so you're 55, right? So, um, any, anybody else? Well, friends, I know that we have people trickling back in that, that haven't been here in months, so it's, it's good to see some people that have returned. Uh, it kind of ebbs and flows right now because of everything going on. But let's sing happy birthday to those people that are named and those people that are hiding their birthday. You're included. So let's sing happy birthday. Happy birthday. Jesus shall reign. Uh, we can keep our masks on. I would think Sarah and I were talking about it before church. We could probably sing at this point, don't you think, Sarah? We have the windows open. We have our masks on. I think it should be okay. So, so we're going to do some singing finally. It's only been a, over a year, right? So let us stand as we're able. 157, Jesus shall reign.
good to sing. You may be seated. So just some joys and concerns. I have an unbelievable joy. I was able to officiate a wedding here yesterday. I know that I officiated the one for Ruby and Kingsley, I think, last winter. But there was a, a many, this many people on our hand I could count. This was an actual wedding. We did all the masks and all that stuff. We you know, had the ring bearers, the flower girls. It was just so nice to celebrate the wedding of, of Kathy and Derek Wellman now. It was just such a, such a blessing. I um, want everybody to know that uh, Betty Dixon is home. Uh, or no, she's not home yet, I don't think. But she's, she's doing a lot better. Um, I know that. Um, she went to the hospital, and she went on uh, late Thursday night into Friday, and, and things were not looking very good at all. But when I went to see her Friday morning, um, she was doing incredibly better. Uh, we were really worried about um, her status, and I called her yesterday, and she was very spunky and very spry. Um, do you know, Peggy, if, if she's going to be coming home soon? Do you have any idea? Okay, so I know that she's a lot better, but... Um, there was a real concern from uh, Denise Singlar um, and also from Sandy Dixon, Betty's daughter, that Betty was in very, very rough shape. So she rallied and she is doing, uh, at least at this point, much better. Uh, continued prayers for Ray Burns. Um, I did try to get a hold of Nancy Sue Burns. I don't know if he's still in the hospital or not, um, but, but prayers for him. Uh, Les Gregory is home. Uh, he was in the hospital and, and he's doing quite well, but I think his daughter said he will not be going anywhere for a couple of weeks. I don't know if he had an option in that or not, but, uh, but he is doing better. Uh, continued prayers for Mike Bowen. Um, I did want to announce that on Monday, June 7th, I'll be officiating the funeral for Bill Davidson. Um, and I talked to Betsy Davidson. Uh, what she wanted me to let everybody know is there's going to be a calling hour now uh, from 1 to 2 on Monday, June 7th. And, and the funeral is open to people, but I think as of right now, there can only be 50 people there. So I don't know uh, how that will work exactly, but there is a calling hour Monday, June 7th from 1 to 2, and then the funeral will be at 2, and I guess, uh, you know, you could go to that as long as it doesn't overload the, the quota. Um, so just, just so you all are aware of that. Uh, prayers for David Braun, um, Fred Braun's son. I went to see Mary and Fred yesterday. Mary had surgery, and she is recovering slowly. Um, David Braun uh, uh, is recovering from COVID, so prayers for him. Prayers for Helen Ritchie, who's one of Mary Braun's uh, neighbors. Uh, apparently, she's struggling with the after effects of, of having COVID. And also, I've been doing a lot of memorial services and funerals as of late. On Wednesday, June 16th at 1 p.m., I'll be doing a memorial service for Jim and Helen Acker, for those uh, that remember those folks. So that'll be here at the church Wednesday, Wednesday the 16th at 1 um, and everybody uh, is welcome to come to that. I, I don't think they really have had come to the church after uh, their daughter Barbara said after about 2007 or 8. So this is going back uh, a handful of years. But if anybody wants to come to that service, um, you're more than welcome. And their daughter Barbara will be here, uh, Barbara Mills, uh, for, for that. So any other uh, joys and concerns this morning? Yeah, <laughs> I think we're going to have a few days in the 80s this week, right? And living where we live, we're like, should we trust it? They said it's going to be warm, but it might snow. So so usually, uh, you know, a lot of people uh, in, in New York that I know, May 15th is when they say we're shutting our furnace off for good uh, until it gets cold. And that usually is, is the rule. But looking at the extended forecast, we have some, some good porch weather coming up. So that's good. Um, so if there are no more, uh, brothers and sisters, let us be in an attitude of prayer on this day that the Lord has made. Almighty and most merciful God, we praise and thank you. Lord, this time last year, our church was shut down. We had virtual Pastor Paul, which was scary for many of us. And now we are able to sit here. We're able to sit here with windows open. We're able to sit here, many of us fully vaccinated. We're able to sit here with a sense that a new normal and new hope is coming. What a difference a year makes. And God, we just thank you for the many blessings in our lives. That we have clothes, that we have food, that we have roofs over our head. Sure, some of us have pains, concerns, and worries. But we've been so blessed by you with the many gifts and graces that you've given us. The ability to earn a living, the ability to help others, the ability to love. We're just so grateful, God, for everything you've given us, that you've given us this beautiful church building to sit in and worship you. How blessed are we. 
But in the midst of all these blessings, God, we're not foolish. We have the news. We know what's going on all around the world. We know that there's been many shootings in this country. So many so when one happens on a given day, it's almost normal now. We know that COVID's still out there. We know that some people are still getting sick, and some people are unfortunately still dying. We know that in this community and many, we have drug addiction problems. We have domestic violence. We have so much suffering going on. And as the people of Jesus Christ, we can make a difference. We can be part of that hope. We can shine light into darkness. And we can live differently and show love and hope in a world that desperately needs it now more than ever. God, on this day, we praise and thank you for this church, the Sydney United Methodist Church. We thank you for all the people in it and the people that are yet to come. We, we pray for all of our brother and sister churches, Sacred Heart across the street, all of the other churches in this area near and far. And we pray that their missions and their strength might be increased so that we can continue to shine light into darkness, bring hope into hopelessness, and love into hate and bitterness. God, on this day, we thank you for our men and women in uniform. It was such a blessing for Melissa and I when we got our COVID vaccinations to see so many soldiers at SUNY Oneonta that were volunteering their time as National Guard soldiers to make sure people were able to get vaccinations. So often, God, we hear about one or two soldiers that have done something bad or something wrong, but we have so many men and women that we should truly be proud of that are serving their communities and their countries, whether they're soldiers in our six branches of the military now, whether they're firefighters, EMTs, police officers, or our incredible medical workers that continue to do so much through this time of the COVID-19 pandemic. We have heroes in our midst. We have men and women every day that suit up and do everything they can, and they deserve our love, our respect, and our honor, because they are making our communities, our country, and our world safer and better. On this day, God, we pray for our government, we pray for our President Joseph Biden. We pray for our Vice President Kamala Harris, our Governor Andrew Cuomo, all of our congresspersons, all of our senators. And we pray, God, that these people that have been elected, that you would use the power they have so that they would govern in ways that reflect your son, your love, your grace, and your mercy. We pray for our leaders. We pray for the persecuted church worldwide where people that love Jesus are not allowed to practice their faith, not allowed to live their faith, and if they do, there could be dire consequences. We pray, Lord, for all those people who are suffering, all those people who are oppressed, victims of human trafficking, people that are being led over our southern border, sometimes connected to drug cartels or other things of that nature, some of the awful and terrible things that continue to go on, the, the people trying to rip us off on the phone, the emails we get from a supposed Nigerian prince giving us millions. There are so many people out there, Lord, that seek to harm, to hurt, and to oppress for their own gain. We know that you've taught us a better way to live, the way of light, the way of hope, the way of your son. And may we spread that, may we live that, so that the world in this community might be made better, that it might be made more like your son. And God, with all of these prayers that we lift to you, we now come before your throne of grace, and we say together that prayer that you taught us to pray nearly 2,000 years ago, when your Son, our Lord, said to his friends, when you pray to God, our Father, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Deb, thanks again for reading the scripture this morning. Our Old, Test our Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 47. Hear the word. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with long sounds of loud songs of joy, for the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great King over all the earth. He has subdued people under us and nations under our feet. He chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. 
Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a song. God is King over the nations. God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. He is highly exalted. And our New Testament reading is from Ephesians, starting at 15 to 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet, and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills Easter people, raise your voices, number 304. remain standing as you're able for a reading from God's holy word. Our uh, reading this morning from the Gospel of St. Luke is chapter 24, verses 44 to 53, which is actually also the end of the Gospel of St. Luke. We have one of the narratives this morning of Jesus's ascension into heaven. So again, Luke 24, verses 44 to 53, and this is what the word says this morning. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scripture, and he said to them, Thus it is written 
that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So I really love, I really do love how the Gospel of Luke ends. Jesus, post-resurrection Jesus, appears to the disciples one last time, leads them out, and says, Stay here for a little bit until you're clothed with power from on high, or until you receive the Holy Spirit, or the Advocate comes, which is the name of our conference monthly magazine or newsletter. So the Holy Spirit comes, which will happen next Sunday, because next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, the day that the Holy Spirit comes, we'll have red paraments, we're invited to wear red, because the fire of God moves, the church is born, and the blood of Christ covers us all. So next Sunday is Pentecost Sunday, and they are excited, they are worshiping God, they're in the temple blessing God. But I've wondered, I've always wondered, and I think I'm right about this, I can't prove it, but I'm pretty certain that there were moments that the disciples were sad that Jesus was gone. You, there are times in your life, maybe when you were a kid, you wished mom and dad weren't there. But for many people now, they wish mom and dad were here. Because there are things they would love to talk to them about, or there are questions you'd like to ask, or you would just like mom's opinion right about now. But she might not be here anymore. And you're in charge. It's a scary thought. I, I had a woman tell me once, she said, when my mother died, I realized that that first Christmas, I was the boss in charge of everything. And it was overwhelming, but it was kind of an honor at this, on the same token to carry on that tradition. Now, I remember when I was a kid, because until 10 years old, I lived in northern Illinois. And I've always been a Cubs fan a Bears fan and a Bulls fan, and the fact that I can admit this freely here shows we're friends. But I remember I grew up, as far as the Bulls, in that Michael Jordan generation. I remember Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen, and I remember how good Michael Jordan was. I read that at a standstill, Michael Jordan could jump 36 inches into the air. I saw a video one time where he jumped Michael Jordan from the free throw line and dunked the basketball. This guy was a force of nature, and we won three titles in Chicago. And then Michael Jordan said, you know what I'll do? I'll go and play baseball. And everybody in Chicago said, why would he do that? And after a few years of doing that, we realized, as he realized, bad choice. And he came back, and they won three more titles. But I remember as a kid having my Michael Jordan poster up going, what are we going to do now? We just lost Michael Jordan. We're never going to win another title ever again. And maybe some of you growing up that got to see Mickey Mantle or somebody like that, when you lose somebody like that, you go, oh no, our team is never going to win again because the leader, the one that knit it all together, the one that kept everything going, they're gone. And now we have no hope. But that isn't the case this morning with the disciples. They have great hope. They're worshiping and praising God, and they know that the Holy Spirit is coming. And next Sunday, at Pentecost Sunday, the birthday of the church, the disciples are fully going to be in charge of the entire Christian movement through the Holy Spirit. Jesus is going to physically be at the right hand of the Father where he sits to this day until he returns, and then we are now in charge of the church. Now, it sounds great, but sometimes it can be a little overwhelming, can't it? I remember that when Melissa and I went to the Moravia Lock Methodist Church, our pastor that was there for 10 or 15 years, Reverend David Hayes, who's retiring next month, I remember early on as a layperson, I'd be kind of an armchair quarterback. And I'd go home after church with Melissa and go, well, kind of an average sermon today, don't you think? The old reverend was kind of off today. It wasn't as exciting. I 
found my head drooping a little bit. And then all of a sudden, one Sunday, Pastor David said, can you preach in two weeks? And I said, moi? You want me to preach in two weeks? And he goes, well, you're a school teacher. You can easily get in front of 300 people, can't you? And I said, no, <laughs> I can't do that. And the first time I preached, my, my hands were cold and clammy, and I was so nervous. And what I realized after that service was, it's so nice to have the pastor up front. But that moment. So I think the disciples, they had gotten a together. I've heard stories from men and women saying, I graduated with this group of people, and every year for years we got together, but then so-and-so passed away, and we just stopped doing it, because they were the thing that kept the whole group together. And as I said for our kids' sermon, Melissa's grandmother, Doris, kept the whole family together for holidays, and I don't think we've really gotten together for one where well, we tried for a year, but it just didn't work out. But as the church, we are commissioned, we are told by Christ to continue the gospel, to continue the mission, because he has equipped us and he has called us. And if I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a pastor well, I'm equipping, I'm helping people to be empowered for the work of the gospel. I know that for a few weeks, and I emailed them out and put them on our Facebook page, there were a couple questions about what you think about how things are going in this church during COVID and where you see in the next five years. And the majority of the responses said, well, everything's going good because of Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul's here, so everything's great. And I thought to myself, and I prayed about it, boy, maybe I have to make a few changes in what I'm doing as the pastor. Because I want to be equipping people. I want every person in the pew to be able and ready to serve God in the many ways that they're called to do it. Now, I'm not going to walk up to you randomly after the service and go, can you preach in two weeks? Some of you might faint if I do that, but you are all Christians. You are all called to the work of the gospel in your own ways, whether that's loving your neighbor, whether that's visiting nursing homes. And I think what happens sometimes in our churches and in our world, we get so accustomed to a leader that we think is strong or charismatic. But what if that leader were to just be gone suddenly? Would we be able to pick up the pieces and go forward? And I know at different times in our lives, we've all lost those leaders. Maybe the star quarterback on your favorite NFL team retired, and you said, what are we going to do now? Or maybe the home run hitter on your favorite baseball team is out for the season, and you go, oh no, there's no hope. The reality, though, is that the love and the hope of Jesus Christ is in all of us. It isn't just in one person. It isn't just in a pastor or a lay leader. And we have the authority from God to share that hope and that love with everybody. And what made the church strong historically, and what has and will continue to make it strong, is we are all part of that great mission of the church in Jesus Christ. Amen? We are all part of the work of the gospel. And we do that all in different ways. And I'm admitting that when I was even younger than I am now, I thought doing the work of the gospel was easy. Until the pastor asked me to preach in two weeks, and I turned whiter than Susan, Suzanne's face mask right there. And all of a sudden, at that point, I said, well, maybe this isn't as easy as I thought it was. I remember when I was a little kid and we went to a Methodist church, I would look up and go, boy, this guy has a great gig going. He does a service and lays in a hammock all week. And then I became a pastor, and I said, this is hard work. This is busy work, but it's great work. There's nothing I would rather do because I am serving God and I am shepherding people through the Holy Spirit to Jesus Christ. And in doing that, lives are being changed, people are being changed, Sydney's being changed, and the world is being changed. That's the work of the gospel. And Jesus is not here physically with us. He's with us spiritually. This morning he ascends. And these 12 jokers that thought they knew everything, all of a sudden they're in charge. Has, anybody ever ha has that ever happened to any of you before? Where all of a sudden you were put in charge suddenly, and you weren't expecting it, and you thought that your boss, what they did was so easy, and all of a sudden you're in charge and you're freaking out internally? Has that ever happened to anybody? So it's like, oh, you know, our boss, they don't know what they're doing. Their job is so easy, and then you're put in charge and you're going, holy moly. 
I'm in charge of everything now. This is pretty tough. I didn't realize how tough this was. You know, when Melissa and I, when we went to get our vaccination shots at SUNY Oneana, I had forgotten this, but in most of the branches of the military, you'll notice now that if they're enlisted, especially their ranks are concealed. You'll see patches on their arms, so you can't really see the stripes anymore. There's a little thing here on their uniform where you can see the rank. And I had done some research a while back on why that was, because in a combat situation, the opposing army or the enemy forces, they would love to find the most senior ranking officer and take them out real quick. Because the idea is if the leader's gone, then the whole thing's done. The church is made up of leaders, and the leaders are us all. Churches should have good pastors. Churches should have loving and committed pastors that preach hope and love and mercy and grace. But don't ever think for a moment you are not part of this journey. Jesus ascends this morning, and he entrusts the work of the gospel and the church to his disciples. He, has, he is saying this morning, you are ready soon. Next Sunday will be Pentecost, and I am entrusting my work my gospel and everything I've taught to you so that 2,000 years later as we're sitting here this morning, that work can continue. The work of feeding, the work of clothing, the work of transforming the world, the work of seeing evil and injustice and saying we want no part of that. We are going to make it better because of the work of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus ascends, he leaves quite a hole, doesn't he? But next Sunday, as we'll see on Pentecost Sunday, the disciples pick up the mantle, and with a no time, they're doing a great and an impressive job. So my challenge for us all this morning, this week, and going forward is, is that you should be equipped and you should be filled with hope as a Christian. That you can go into the world and do amazing things. You don't have to be a pastor to do that. You don't have to have a fancy title or a robe or a soul. You can do the work of the gospel today. You can do the work of the gospel in a variety of ways. And when we all do that, and when we do that together, the church is stronger, the community is stronger, and the world is better. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, God is good. And all the time, through this time of pandemic, I, I just want to thank people for continuing to give to the church so generously. So that the missions and the, the ministries in this church can continue. Some days when I'm really tired, I will forget what ministry or what program is here. I will hear doors opening and people talking and I'll say, oh yeah, it's martial arts or Narcotics Anonymous. This church is used by so many community organizations. We are able to bless and do so many things. If this church was not here in Sydney, I think this community would be significantly worse for us. I thank you for your devotion to God, your love for Jesus Christ, and your willingness to respond to that by giving generously, because the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. So let us pray. We have a plate here. We have two back there. So for those who have or will be giving uh, before you leave, I'm going to pray over those offerings. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we praise and thank you for this day. We thank you for the joy you've given us and the blessings you've given us. God, you've given us every good thing. And everything we have is not ours, it's on loan. And we have it until we depart this earth the way your son departed today. May we be generous and caring and giving, knowing that you've blessed us. May we give generously so that we may bless others. And may you take our offerings and grow them and multiply them and stretch them so that the ministries of this church can continue to flourish and grow. We pray this in the name of your son, the one who ascends into heaven to sit at the, the right hand of you who will return in glory. Jesus Christ, amen. Our closing hymn this morning is from the faith we sing, or as I like to call it, the skinny hymnal. Uh, this is more of a response. It's not a full song. So we're going to sing this through twice. I'd invite you to stand and sing. Shout to the Lord.
friends, on this day we celebrate and remember that our leader, our top guy, our general, our savior, Jesus, physically leaves. He'll be back eventually. We don't know when, but we know he will. And until then, he's entrusted this all to us. He's entrusted this gospel to us, the hope of this gospel, the truth of this gospel to us through the Holy Spirit. May we never take that lightly, for we are the church. We are the people called to bring hope and light and love into a world that knows very little. And we go forth this day doing just that on this Ascension Sunday. Be blessed in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. God, we thank you on this day of Ascension that you have entrusted us with the glory of your gospel. To live it out, to be the church, to show people through word, action, and deed who your Son, Jesus Christ, is. Be with us, God, as we bring this service to a close, that we might go forth in our various capacities and show this community and the world the glory of your Son, our Savior, the Ascended One, Jesus Christ. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.